you do, turn to Hebrews chapter 4 with me tonight. And verse number 12. Hebrews 4.12 For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and to the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Amen. Lord bless your word now, this holy book. Your word will not return void. It will accomplish what you please. Thy name I pray, man. Uh, one of the best bumper stickers I ever saw, and I still to this day uh, uh, consider it to be that, and that is it said, if you can read this, think a teacher. And that's very practical and very real. Because the truth there is, folks, there are illiterate people, and that's shame. Because if you can't read, you're totally dependent upon somebody else. Right. Now, of course, you can get the Bible in I mean, in, in audio now, and you can play it, play it. Alexander Scorby, and now they've two or three others have read the Bible through, and that's a good thing. That's a very good thing, yeah. because sometimes folks lose their eyesight or macular degeneration, things of that nature, and they can't read as well as they used to. But to be able to sit down and open up a book, a book in front of you like this, and read it. And notice the language it's written. What's the language here? Somebody said, that's American. No, it's not American. It's English. All right, it's English. And, uh, and I'd say most of us in this house today will understand English. English is not, of course, not in any way the oldest language. You have to go back to Hebrew and the Semitic languages to get back in ancient languages. Chinese, for example, that's ancient language. But the is written, the New Testament is written what's called Koine Greek. Koine. Koine simply means the Greek or common Greek of the people, what they spoke on the street. Why? Because it's therefore accessible. You can read it. You don't have to have a PhD uh, 2,000 years ago to read the New Testament. All 27 books. Of course, it took them uh, a couple hundred years to get all 27 together and publish the Bible. But uh, to be able to read it, read it in your tongue. The Old Testament is written in Hebrew with some Aramaic. Hebrew. Hebrew and Greek are as foreign to each other as possible. They are foreign to each other. They are completely foreign. I've studied Greek and I've studied Hebrew. I had three years of Greek grammar, two years of Hebrew grammar. I had the hardest thing I ever had in my life to deal with was Hebrew. Hebrew not Greek and uh, Hebrew because it is absolutely a foreign language in every sense of the word. But the Bible is 66 books. And if we think that, uh, that Job was written, a contemporary of Abraham, around 1900 B.C., and then the canon of Scripture was closed in 90 or 95 A.D., then what have you got? You've got 2,000 years. Now, of course, we don't know. You hear, you hear preachers and they'll say, well, it took 14, 1,500 years to write the Bible. If Moses wrote Job, that's it. That's true. But we don't know who wrote Job. But in any event, the Bible has been around a long time. It's been around a long time. Now, why do you have it? Why do you have it in your hands right now? The government didn't give you that Bible. No, the government like to take it away from you. They kick God out of school. They don't, they, don't want you, they don't want you to have the Bible. But anyway, the government did not give you that Bible. Right. And so where did it come from? Well, did it come from people? No, it didn't come from people. The Bible said the men of God's sake is they were moved by the Holy Spirit. In other words, they were inspired. God breathed. Theos in Greek is God. Neustos, where we get pneuma, pneumatic. Uh, is where a pneumatic drill is what? It's an air drill. So theos neustos, God breathed. That's where the scripture came from. I accept that. Do you, do you believe in the inspiration of the Bible? Uh, when you hold a book in your hands like that, you have to ask yourself a question. I'm going to give you three questions that you ask yourself before we go any further. 
For one thing, you're holding in your hands something that's precious. Do you know what they do to you in North Korea if they find you with one of these? Other communist places? Why? Why are they so afraid of that book? It doesn't say anything about the communism. In fact, the matter is, in the book of Acts, there was a little communism for a while. They shared all things. And they, uh, I hate to use the word, they had all things in common. That's what it means. They took care of their bills and they contributed all. This is where Ananias and Sapphira got in trouble when they stood before Peter. But uh, Marxism, I had rather called it Marxism. Of course, you know, came from, from uh, 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 Karl Marx. And it was, uh, it was put to the, it was put to, put to use, put by uh, Lenin and Trotsky and the rest of them. But uh, the Bible, you hold in your hands is something that's precious. Let me ask you question number one. Do you really want to know what's in this book? Do you really want to know? Do you really want to know? Uh, and let me tell you this, folks, tonight. I've been studying the Bible now for 45, uh, about 40, 48 years. About 48 years. And I marvel how when I go back into the Bible, God will show me something that I hadn't seen before. Just just Amen. jumps off the pages. The Bible. And of course, that, in, that inspires you. That fires yeah. you up again to go back into the Bible. Yeah. Uh, you hear it. Uh, I went to one, one, one place. They had a revival meeting. They said, come, you ought to hear this preacher. Greatest thing in the world. So I went over there and sat down. He read one verse of Scripture, and then from then on, it was story and song. Huh. Entertainment. Just a little religious entertainment. Right. No more Bible. No more Bible. Now, there's nothing wrong with stories. Don't misunderstand me. Nothing wrong with that because these are witnesses and things that may, that, that may definitely add to what you're talking about. Not against stories at all. Not at all. Entertainment, music, so forth and so on. Music's good. They sang before man was ever made. The sons of God were shouting and singing before the first man was ever made. But folks, where's the Word of God? The Word of God. Do you really want to know? Number two, do you want something for your soul? Yeah. You say, yeah. well, this preacher just does not satisfy me. Preacher's no. not supposed to satisfy you. No. No. God satisfies you. Indeed. You read his word. Indeed. It's not yeah. God, not the preacher. Man, the preacher preaches. Yes, he does. Yeah. But uh, I don't, uh, I have respect a lot of men, but I do not look to any of those men to no. keep me right with God no. and to keep me... Uh, Keep yes. me inspired. Yes. Number three, do you have confidence in the book that you hold in your hands? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you really have confidence yeah. in it? You can say, yeah. this is God's word from cover to cover. Indeed. Now, how many of you in, in this house tonight are aware of the fact that there are many, many, many different translations of the yeah. Bible? All right. This gets into what's called manuscript evidence, and that in itself is a big study. What it simply means is that the New Testament was translated by what's called the majority text or the received text. The vast majority of the, of the Greek available, okay, is what was the basis for the King James Bible, okay? You have the Sinaiticus, the Vaticanus, the Washingtonius, and all the rest of them. They have their translations. But the one that the people, the people, you and I, pick up, and memorize is this book. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I want to ask you a question. You don't have to answer this. Are you not sure that you have the Word of God that you think maybe a, it's got some mistranslations in it? All right, now I'm going to ask the person, I'm going to ask the one, I want to put him on the spot tonight. All right, preacher, you tell these people that that book had mistranslations in it. Yeah. All right, show me one you believe. Go ahead, don't, don't crawfish, because none of them agree. No. So therefore, preacher, you don't have a Bible you can hold in your hands and say you believe it from cover to cover. Now, that's rough. That's mean. But that's the truth, because this yeah. is my business. I've been in this a long time. Yeah. A long time. I've been at this. And what happens is a young man has been off to Bible college or something, learned a little bit. And he wants to impress the people and he'll say a better rendering or this is a mistranslation or what this and that and this and that. And when it gets done with you, he's caused you to doubt the book you've got in your hands. Like I told you a minute ago, I've had three years of Greek grammar. Three years of it. 
And, uh, and I didn't enjoy it, and I didn't enjoy Hebrew, but I knew I had to do it. Why? Nobody's going to flim-flam me when it comes to the translation of the Bible. They're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. It's not going to happen. You'll notice in here that I'll use words like run the etymology of the word yeah. or the cognizance, terminology that has to do, well, here's a word similar to this word that was used at that time in the world. That's a cognizant. All right? And then the etymology means where did this word come from? Yeah. What's the source of it? Where was it used? Where did it come from? What made this word? What created this word and brought it down to us today? All right? That's two parts. There's more to it than that. But that's just two of them. So when I pick up a Bible and I begin to study it and I see a word in here, you can take an English dictionary, and I recommend one's at least 150 years old. Get back in the 18 yeah. something, I forget what it is. Right. And uh, get the English dictionary and get the, um, and get the immediate meaning of the word. Yeah. And you'll be amazed at how the word has changed in meaning right. to this day. It's changed. But go further than that if you want to and get a Strong's Concordance. How many of you know what a Strong's Concordance is? All right, now they've improved Strong's Concordance. They've got what's, I think they've got one called Strong Strong's. And what they did was run it through a computer and, uh, and found any errors that might have been in it. And, uh, and, and, and you know, and then they, they, uh, they revised it. I love Strong's Concordance. If I don't have a computer around, I could just open up Strong's Concordance, find the word, it'll give you a number. And all you have to do is take that number, you find the Greek word for it, and then you can look at the meaning of that word, the, the etymology of that word. Where did it come from? See what I mean? The hood on a car. We've got a hood out here. How many of you got hoods on your cars? Y'all do. You know what they call it in England? A bonnet. <laughs> yeah. 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 Serious as I can be. No. Well, what's a different? Because people live in different cultures at different yeah. times. So... It's important to be able to do that. That'll help you in your Bible study. When I first got saved, I had the living Bible. I had this Bible, that Bible, this Bible. They say, y'all try this one. So I tried that one. I tried this one. I tried that one. Ran here, ran there. Ran here, ran there. And I sat down one day and I said to myself, what in the thunder am I doing? Yeah. I don't have anything I can really believe. Then I started praying. Yeah. I started praying. Yeah. And God brought me back to the King James Bible. Does this mean you're going to hell if you don't believe? No, no, no. I've got some of the best friends I've got. They, they, they use all kinds of translations. But like I say to you, you can take a word in the Bible, you do the etymology on it, and it'll help you to explain it and so forth and so on. That's good. But I do not change the text. I don't touch the text of the Bible. Now, the Word of God is this book. Okay, it's not the Word of man. You ever heard somebody say men wrote that book? Mm -hmm. Sure. You've heard men say that. Men wrote that book. Yeah, but they were moved by the Holy Ghost to write it. It didn't originate from men. It came from God. The Bible said in John chapter number 1 and verse number 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay? All right. Now, what's that important? Because the living Word is the Lord Jesus Christ. Note carefully. The Word of God is quick. The word quick means alive. It's alive. There's not another book on the... Sears and Roebuck catalog's not alive. No. I've got a 1912, I think it is, Sears and Roebuck catalog. I'd like to buy some of the guns in there for what they sold for 1912. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, boy, I'm telling you. That thing, it's, it, it, it starts, it's talking about the 3030. A lot of you men know exactly what I'm talking about, 3030. It's called the Winchester Center Fire when it first came out. Marlin, they, Mar Marlin called it 30-30. And oh, how they were carrying on about it. Why? Because it was smokeless powder. And the, and, and the muzzle velocity was fast compared to that day. See? But they don't do that today because they've got magnums and on and on and on it goes. Things change. So the only living book is this book right here. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. <laughs> Better be careful how I handle this thing. Yes. That's a living yes. book. Well, you th Preacher, you mean you really believe? Yeah, I believe the yes. Bible. The words in this book are living. Yes. The Word of God is quick, quick, yes. quick, quick, yes. and powerful. Yes. So what does it mean, Word of God? Let me give you a dispensational aspect to it. Look at Hebrews chapter number 12 and verse number 18. Hebrews 12, 18. 
Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 18. For you are not come unto the mount that might be touched, and that burned with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet, and of words, which voice they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them any more. Now meditate on that. What is that? That's the word of God, and it's the Old Testament word of God. Now watch how the Bible defines itself. Look at, look at, uh, look at, uh, look at verse number uh, 20. For they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it should be stoned or thrust through with a dart. Yeah. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. Now watch this. But ye are come unto Mount Sion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things of Abel than Abel. Now look at Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter number 1. Don't you read, just let the Bible speak for itself. Now look what it says. Yeah. Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners, in other words, different times in different ways, yeah. speak the word in time past, the fathers by the prophets. There's the word of God. Tells you how it came. Now look at verse number two. Hath in these last days, What? spoken unto us by him. See there? there? There's a dispensational aspect to it. I, mar I, I warn you again. You find a preacher that spends all his time in the Old Testament. He knows nothing of the grace of God. And this is in no wise disparaging the Old Testament. The Old Testament it opens the door to the new. The Bible said that it was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Any honest man, any half honest man will say to you, I can't meet the demands of the Old Testament. I can't keep those Ten Commandments. The Jews say there's 613 commandments. I can't do that. I can't do it. I can't do it. So what do you do? God in his grace has spoken through the Lord Jesus Christ to give us something that we could never attain on our own and never really be made free. How? Only by the Son of God. And he speaks. Lord Jesus said, you have heard it said of old times, but I say unto you. Did you get that? You have heard it said of old times, but I say unto you. Does it make what was said in old times bad? No, it was old times. He said, but now I say unto you. So the Bible says that it's, uh, it, he hath spoken. It's quick. Alive. Do you know what the Greek word for alive is? Now I'm just going to go to the Greek for you. Zoe. Zoe. That's the Greek word. The word of God is zoe. You think of anything today that that might be connected with? What? Zoo. That's where the English word zoo came from. Do the etymology. Go find you a, diction, a, a dictionary or something. Do the etymology on zoo and you'll find out it goes right straight back to zoe. A Greek word. Alive. You got a zoo full of what? Living animals. See what I mean? So quick, Isaiah chapter number 55 and verse number 11 says this in Isaiah 55 and verse number 11. I don't spend my time critiquing the scripture. <clears throat> I let the scripture critique me so shall my word be that goeth out of my mouth it shall not return to me void it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it that's his word when you got saved did you have a desire to read the Bible see I, you know I didn't experience what you experienced you had your experience I had mine I know what brought me out of hell and he changed my life Something was inside me after that that wasn't in there before. And one of the things, one of the first things that I noticed is I wanted to get into the Bible. Nobody had to tell me. I wanted into the Bible. I had a hunger for the Word of God. 
What, how'd that come about? Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit. So it's quick and it's powerful. Now it tells you it does something here. I'm going to give you three words. I want you to look at it in Hebrews chapter number 4 and verse number 12. The three things. Hebrews 4.12. The word of God is quick, powerful, sharp, and any two-edged sword, piercing, even to dividing, and discerner. See, those are active words, They're verbs, piercing, dividing, and, uh, and is a discerner, discerns, actively discerns the thoughts and intents of the heart. So what happens when you pick up the Bible, it is piercing to that part that separates your animal nature because there's a part of you that's not one bit better than any dog or cat or rat running around. It's the natural man. It's the old animal nature. That's what it is. That's all it'll ever be. But the natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness to him. Neither can he know them for they are spiritually discerned. Since his spirit is dead... There's no way he can discern the spiritual things of God. And so what does the word of God do? The word of God goes in there and it pierces even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. There's the spiritual part. And of the joints and marrow. That's the animal part. Yes. Yes. And as the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God therefore operates on you. You've had a spiritual operation take place. You mean to tell me I've been a, yes, sir. Just as surely as you sit here tonight, the Holy, Holy Spirit went right inside you and ripped them apart. And you see, the old man, the unsaved man, they're joined together. And his source can, no more, can never be any, any greater than that flesh. But once you're born of the Spirit of God, then you have the Holy Spirit who guides you into all truth. And causes you to receive the truth of the word of God. Why so much? Because the Holy Ghost is the third person of the Trinity that wrote the Bible. Right. Holy men of God, of God spake as they were moved by the what? Holy, Holy Ghost. Yeah. Holy Ghost. Yes. Holy Ghost. And so it was that the scripture comes like that. So he pierces to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit to the joints and marrow. I read a thing this afternoon about a homosexual. You have, you, have to know, you have to understand how to deal with homosexuals. You understand that? Would a homosexual be welcome here at Temple? Yes. Well, absolutely. Yes. I mean, where's he going to go to get help? Right. I have no idea who comes in here. Right. Well, good night. I have no idea. What am I supposed to do? Stand at the door and, and even at that say, well, you're not living right. You're not coming in this place. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you're coming in here for. That's right. It's to get help. Amen. That's why you're here. Yeah. And we've had homosexuals come to the temple yeah. that I'm, I'm fully aware of. But anyway, this homosexual had somebody who's a good friend. He said, I'm praying for you. He said, well, you go ahead, pray for him. That's fine. Do, do your thing. If that's, if that's good for you, go ahead. That's fine. That's their attitude. Okay? Relativism. Your truth. If that your truth, that's your truth. But then, that homosexual got a hold of the Bible. Okay? The Bible. Just the Bible. I don't remember the circumstances leading up to that homosexual taking hold of the Bible and opening it up. And when he opened that Bible, it began to speak to him like he had never been spoken to before. And Lord have mercy when he got to Romans chapter number one. <laughs> you see... Back in Leviticus and all that. He read that. Well, what are you going to do? Well, I'll tell you what happened to him. The Holy Spirit pricked his heart to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. He repented of his sin of homosexuality and got saved. Born again by the grace of God. I'm going to tell you right now, make no mistake about it, the woke crowd out here, that's the last thing they want to hear. Because as far as they're concerned, you're born that way, you live that way, you die that way, and it's not a choice. What you are coming to the world, what and so on, on it goes. But not according to the Bible. No. So he went to his partner. Once he got saved, you partner, you know, everybody got partner today. Significant other. How many's ever heard of that one? 
what in the world is that? He went to his partner and told him what had happened to him and wanted to open the Bible and read it to him and show him what, a grace, what the grace had done for him. And his partner said, I'm a part of it. Go your way. We're done. We're finished. Hit the road, Jack. Don't you come back. See you later, alligator. That's it. He didn't want to hear it. Now look at the two. Both of them were practicing the same sin. Both of them. One of them opened the living word. Now what does what something alive do? <laughs> he took something alive inside him. That thing, the thing, I hate to use the word thing, the word that was in him began to do exactly what the word does. The separation of bone structure from spirit and soul. And when he did, he awakened something inside him that had been lying dormant. You see, the Bible said he's the light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. The Lord Jesus is that light. He's the light. And so it awakened something inside him. And then he began to experience something he never experienced in his life because then the word of God started coming. He was no longer rejecting it. He was reading it. And by reading God's word, when we say it, you've got to have a preacher there. The Bible can preach. This is a better preacher than I've ever been. 10,000 times better than me. Say, so how come? It doesn't make any mistakes. I do. I forget where I'm at and I get messed up over here on the wrong thing and I'm running over here. And, but the Bible is perfect. It's the word of God. And he got saved. I remember about 25, 30 years ago, there was a TV station coming out of Jones, Jones, uh, Jonesboro. No, what is it up there? Uh, next to the Follett. Uh, Jacksboro. Jacksboro. They had a TV station up there, and uh, it's been about 30 years ago, maybe more. And I started watching them because it was a Christian station. And well, they had this girl come on all the time. She was an ex-lesbian, and she wanted you to know it. And she was constantly reminding the people of what she used to be. But she'd been saved. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you why that's important. Everybody out here in a homosexual lifestyle is not hunky-dory, happy, partner, no. you know, this is life, this is... No, 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 no. A lot of them out there are miserable as they can be. Amen. Amen. And, they, and they need to be born again. Let me tell you something. It doesn't take any more grace to save a homosexual than it does a lying thief. It doesn't take any more blood to wash his sins away than it does the sins of a self-righteous hypocrite. Amen. Same Christ, same Lord, glory to God, same baptism. I can say to anybody anywhere at any time, he loves you and he'll save you. I don't care what you've done. Don't have to tell me what you've done. He'll save you, write your name in heaven. You'll become a new creature in Christ. He'll forgive you. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. And so that's what the Bible says. You say, well, now, preacher, I'm bored. Okay, tell you what to do. <laughs> we all get bored. <laughs> Sometimes we, that's, the, that's the way we're made. God did not put you here to sit on that bench 24-7. <laughs> I hope you know that. I hope you know that he put you here. When he made Adam, he put it in the garden to dress it and keep it. That's before he ever sinned. He said, now don't you dress this, now don't you to keep it, you can, you can, whatever you want to do, plant this here and plant that there, you go right ahead, it's yours, do what you want to. Yeah. And so Adam set about to do it. That's what he made us for. He gave us that, uh, you ever watch an old dog lay around all day long? Yeah. Well, you know why the old dog lays around all day long? He doesn't have enough sense to do much more. He wasn't put here to build and construct anything. Yeah. Okay, just being a dog, 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 good old dog. <laughs> yeah. But you're not a dog. You're a human being made by God. Here's what to do if you're bored. Find you a hole, a place. Lay the book down. If you don't have a Bible, get you one. Now, you know which one I believe is the Word of God. It's KJV. Get you one. Put your hand on it. Get you in a hole somewhere. Say, Lord, I don't know Greek. I don't know Hebrew. I don't know any of this. I don't, I, I, I don't even have a, I don't have a college education. I'm just an old boy here. And, you know, can you speak to me from this book? And then get quiet. Get quiet. Here's your biggest problem, America's problem. We're too fast. 
We pray a prayer to God and expect Him to jump the minute we say it. God doesn't have to. Listen, God doesn't get in a hurry. The fullness of time, He brought forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law. Give Him time to start talking to you. Now, it might be soon, but let Him put something in your soul where you know He heard you. And then open it up. Say, well, where should I go? It's all good. <laughs> but honestly, I would, I guess, I don't know. They used to say, just start with the Gospel of John. Uh, that, that's, yeah, that John's good. Really, it's good just to read it. You know, just read it, read it, read to the surface of it. What's it say? Don't have to get into all of the nuances of it and all of that. Just read it. What's it say? Familiarize yourself with the Bible. Do that. You know, how many of you know all the books of the Bible? All 66. It's good. You know them. Do you know where I learned them? I learned them at Beaumont Grammar School. Public school. 150 years ago. Amen. I learned all the books of the Bible. I did. In the public school. Boy, that's awful, wasn't it? Good. Sure. Huh? Wasn't that terrible? Oh, man, what a thing. Learn the books of the Bible. We used to get up and have devotions. We used to pledge allegiance to the flag. We had a picture of George Washington hanging on the wall, Abraham Lincoln, uh, patriotism, all that. That's what we had when we went to school. And you know something? I never heard anybody come in and shoot a bunch of kids back then. Never. Didn't happen. The Bible was read. The Bible was read. We prayed. We prayed. And the Bible was read. And we're not perfect. But I'll guarantee you one thing. I think an awful lot of those kids that went to school with me, a lot of them are gone now. I can keep a, keep a, get on the internet and check old rural high school. And it's maybe how many keep passing away. And they're passing, passing, passing. But you'd be surprised how many of those people hold that Bible up now. They believe that book. They love the Bible. They love the Bible. They were taught right. They love the Bible. They love the Bible. So it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. What does that mean? The Greek word, now here we go Greek again. Remember, quick, zoe. Discerner, what word is that? Kritikos. How would you put that in English? Somebody said it. Critique. Critique. Oh, you telling me that the Bible critiques me? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. It criti As a matter of fact, nowhere in the Bible does it tell you to critique the Bible. <laughs> Just read it, listen to it, get on your face and pray. If God speaks to you, hear him, and go back to it, because your life will come from it. Yes, sir. The entrance of, the entrance of thy words giveth what? It giveth understanding to the simple. So in his word we will meditate both day and night. The discerner. The kritikos, the critique, he discerns my heart. The Bible says the heart is deceitfully wicked, and uh, the heart is, how does it go? The heart, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, right? Who can know it? How the Lord searched the heart, I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Amen. Amen. Love it. You can mess with me, but don't mess with my Bible. Amen. 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 Because that's my identity. That's who I am. Right here. This is who I am. This is what I am. Father, bless your word. Thank you for the little time we've had together with my brothers and my sisters. I think in my heart, Father, the vast majority of the people in this house have no problem believing the Bible. They believe it's inspired. They're not trying to find fault in it. It speaks to them. They love it. They read it. They carry it with them. And Father, I know that. They're my brothers and my sisters in Christ. And you speak to them through your word. But there may be some in here tonight or somebody watching this thing who's been messed with. Their mind has been messed with. And they know it because they're beginning to lose their faith in the Bible. Somebody's put them on the wrong track. They're beginning to believe the lie where it says this is a mistranslation. And on and on and on and on it goes. In Jesus' name I pray. Help them, Lord. Amen. One more thing and I'll shut up tonight. You need to know this. I've said it before, but you need to know this. When somebody says the original says this, okay, 
He's talking about something that doesn't exist. Maybe. The English word extant, extant, okay? That's just a big word that simply means it exists, all right? As far as we know, there are none of the original autographs extant, but now they could possibly dig up the original Peter. It's possible, but we don't have it, and we don't know where it is, okay? So keep that in mind. You don't have the original text, but you've got God's word. Amen. I'm done. Oh, he's already sung. All right. <laughs> Getting old, senile, feeble, can't remember anything, brother. All right, we'll take your prayer request tonight.